As a counselor, Bethany Williams gives white handkerchiefs to children in war-torn Africa. She asks them to draw their pain on the handkerchief and then their dreams. It's all about healing from brokenness, a journey that Bethany once had to make for herself. Psychologist Bethany Haley Williams wanted to help children in war-torn countries heal from their emotional trauma. But before she could do that, she had her own battle to fight. After ending her 10-year marriage in 2004, Bethany fought off depression and thoughts of suicide. Then she discovered that God could use her failures for a greater purpose. In her book, The Color of Grace, Bethany shares about her brokenness and how God changed her deepest pain into her greatest joy. Please welcome to the 700 Club, Bethany Haley Williams. It's great to have you with us. Thank you for having me. Let's, your story is really a redemption story. I guess all of us who know Jesus have a redemption story, but you're pretty candid about how God used a deep loss in your life and what you considered a failure to really tenderize your heart toward the needs of other people. You had a troubled marriage, very painful divorce, and that left you feeling not only a lot of pain, but I think rejection and judgment of people. How did you get help in that time in your life? Um, I think at that time in my life, I was completely full of shame and being a counselor, I was supposed to be the one with all the answers. And Does that make it harder to get help? Yes. Yeah. Um, because, because God kind of has to kill your pride a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah. Um, so for me, I understood that when my level of desperateness was bigger than my fear of embarrassment, mm -hmm. then true healing started to happen. When you let yourself begin that process, you found yourself in treatment in Dallas and you heard a man speak at that time and it changed your life. Tell us about what Absolutely. happened. Absolutely. Yeah, I um, actually sold my car to, to go to treatment, to pay for treatment. Um, and the last Sunday, I walked to the nearest church on foot and heard a man speaking. He had an African accent and, um, and I heard him talk about his pain. And from his pain, surviving the Rwandan genocide, he founded an organization and they deal with reconciliation and trauma care. And so afterwards, I just pulled him aside and I said, can we talk? I want to know what happens to the children in, mm -hmm. in wars and, and is there anything to help, you know, with trauma with those kids? And um, so fast forward two years later, I actually went on a trip to Congo with that organization that totally broke my heart. And then two to three weeks after I returned, Exile International was founded. Yeah. I, I think we all have heard the stories of the, the child soldiers, those who were victims of uh, these horrible rebels who came in and burned homes, decimated families. I mean, and have wondered what happens to the children because the parents are usually killed in that. When you made your first trip to Congo, what was that like for you? Wow, I think that um, reality hit me in the face. I had child soldiers who asked me to be their mother. Mm -hmm. um, I played with girls who were raped as young as three and four years old. So it wasn't just a story anymore. It wasn't just something you saw on the news. These were real children who had faces, who had names, and most of them had been orphaned because of the war. I want to talk a little bit about the therapy that you use because I found it fascinating as I read your book. You, you hand out handkerchiefs to the children and on one handkerchief they're to draw the worst mm -hmm. most terrible thing that's ever happened to them and then on the other handkerchief they draw their dream right and then you have them take a heart cut out a heart mm -hmm. and that's god's love for them and they pray over that and then put it in the middle mm -hmm. of the handkerchief yeah. what what do you see happen? Some of the stories, first of all, that you've seen drawn on these handkerchiefs, mm -hmm. you have pictures of them in your book. They're so compelling. Were you taken aback by the children's willingness to share such horror, really? Yes, and, and again, it kind of brings the reality to, to the surface. Um, when you see them drawing dead bodies and guns and burning huts, yeah. then you realize that that's what's trapped in their brain. They're not drawing mm -hmm. pictures of 
clowns, you right, know. or houses um, or trees or... Right, yeah. they're drawing pictures of what's trapped in their heads and that's of war. Um, and then drawing God in the middle of that is very powerful for them because yeah. they are able to remember, you know, God didn't leave me when I was being raped in the bush, when I was being forced to kill my parents. He didn't leave me. He was actually yeah. there. Yeah. You, some of the, what would, what is a story that is really most memorable to you about the horror of war for a child? I mean, you had many, many of them in your book and it just kind of takes your breath away as you read it. Yeah, well, in the beginning of the book, I talk about Nelson. Um, we change all of the kids' names in the books just for their protection, but he was, um, he was kidnapped by the LRA at 10 years old, and he was forced to actually chop his parents into pieces. And um, you would think a child like that couldn't... Would, be, would lose mind Absolutely. Over Sanity. Right. Yeah. Um, and right now, he is doing great. He's in school. Um, and the last time I was with him, I asked him, what do you want to do with your life? What do you dream of? And he wants to um, lead other people to Jesus. He wants to work with orphans yeah. of war. The power of God to heal wounds that deep is beyond measure. You mentioned Exile International being formed. What is Exile International? What are you doing? Exile International exists to provide trauma care and um, food and clothing and medical care and education peace building skills, leadership skills to children who survived war and former child soldiers. Yeah, you know, it's such an amazing thing. The numbers can be so staggering that you can almost back away from it. But the message of your book is so powerful. We really can make a difference and you do it one child at a time. Absolutely, and from the beginning I felt like, you know, if these were my kids, I couldn't look away. Right. I couldn't not do anything. I wouldn't have that option. So I think when a child has been orphaned, they're really all of our children. Um, and especially with a child that's been so traumatized, they really need someone to believe in them and to see that they are more than what they were forced to do. Yeah. Jesus invites us to touch the least of these and says we're touching him. And that's really, I mean, you've seen not just the horrors of war, but poverty beyond measure, which is also very debilitating in a child's life. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that feeling that you, every child should have. You talk a, a great deal in the book about aloneness and abandonment, and that it, that is devastating for all of us, whether we're five or 50, it really takes a, a powerful toll on our lives. Mm -hmm. But we can touch that, you're touching it. What's your goal, what's your dream, what's your hope for the future? Well, of course, my dream is to reach more kids. Um, we were just in Congo, my husband and I, um, we run the ministry together. We were just there about a month ago and we're having to turn away kids every month mm. just in the area that we're in, in Uganda and Congo. Um, specifically in Congo, there were a hundred children who were rescued yeah. in the two weeks while we were there. Mm. Um, so my hope is that um, more people become aware of what's going on and they step into their story to make the ending of their story look a lot different than the beginning well, of their and story. the ending of their nation because really you're raising children to know what it means to be a peacemaker and one day they will be the leaders of Absolutely. their country yeah while you were busy pouring yourself into the lives of these children god brought your story first circle full circle and you met matthew Yes, I did. Matthew received his master's in um, counseling from Dallas Theological Seminary and was on his own journey to work with sex trafficking victims and child soldiers and a mutual friend connected us. Um, we started to work together and dated for two years. I was a little shy because of my background and had already always said I would be a, a nun. I'm just going to be a <laughs> Protestant nun. I'm okay with just Jesus being my husband. Um, but he's a remarkable man. So now we're able to, um, to lead the ministry together. Mm, that's wonderful. God takes our mess and he gives us a message, doesn't he? Well, Bethany has written a compelling book about her personal story and the stories of these extraordinary children. It's called The Color of Grace. It's available wherever books are sold. A great Easter gift for yourself if you want to remind yourself of how great God's redemption is. Also, if you'd like more information about her organization, Exile International, just log on to see. CBN.com. Thank you so much. Thank Great you for to have having you here. me.